Hey everybody, this is Heidi and you are watching Heidi Creates. This week, we are gonna take some of your most basic supplies and, and when I say basic, I mean basic. I mean, you can start from just using acrylic paints like apple barrel paints, which are very inexpensive, which you can get from your big box stores to even your uh, more high-end artist acrylic paints. And you can create your own personalized water bottle. Here we also have the um, Carlin Matte Finish Masking Tape, some inexpensive paint brushes, and a paint marker. And mine is in black. Anytime while you're watching this video, if you're enjoying what you're seeing, um, would you do me a favor and hit the thumbs up button? If you click on subscribe and the bell right next to it, that'll notify you every time we have a new video. So stay tuned. We're going to make a personalized water bottle. Well, first and foremost, obviously we need a water bottle that we can paint. And this is just stainless steel. I believe I got this one at Walmart. Yep, it's a double-walled vacuum sports bottle. Here is a really great tip for you. If you have no idea what kind of color schemes to choose, go to Pinterest, type in the color that you like. In this instance, I chose aqua. So I put in color, aqua color palette. All these different color palettes popped up on my screen and it's going to give you lots and lots of different choices. I chose my four colors. I put actually do have an aqua color and I'm doing um, this gray color with it. They call it steel. This is by Waverly and this is an ivory color. This is a rose gold. So I'm doing these four colors on my water bottle. These are all different um, brands of paints and you can pretty much go with anything. Go with acrylic. Um, it dries quickly. If you don't have paint brushes, go to one of your big box stores and get some cheap brushes. We're going to be using some masking tape. I got painter's tape and the regular masking tape. We're going to be using tape to tape off the sections on the bottle that I don't want to um, get paint on. Some water so you can clean your brushes, some paper towel or other rags for also cleaning your brushes. We'll go ahead and get started with the first step. What I'm going to do first is I'm actually going to take this sandpaper. This is 100 grit um, sandpaper and you can see I made some scratches here already and I'm just going to rub it on um, the surface area where I'm going to paint um, just because I want to give it a little tooth. This will ensure that the flowers stick a little bit better and I'm not painting below this line that's right here on the base of this so I'm being really careful not to scratch down there because um, I want that to stay shiny looking. And I'm not painting down here just because it gets a little bit more abuse. You know, you're putting it in cup holders and resting it down on any kind of rough surfaces. I am planning on going up the neck, just up the rounded section right here. And really, it doesn't have to be a lot. I'm just dulling up any of the area where I'm gonna be painting, just making sure it's dull. I'm gonna go ahead and mask it off with some tape not wanting to paint below this line that's down here. There we go. Do you want to make sure once you've sanded it and everything that this is clean? Okay, I'm not going to worry about up here. Um, I think I kind of like to have that free edge of the flowers. So we're going to do an irregular round shape for our first flower. And basically just keeping in with round, I'm just giving it a wavy edge. Now just so you know, I am using white. It's more of a heavy body paint. And I'm using this first because it gives actually a nice coat. It gives a better coat, I should say. <laughs> um, because this particular rose gold that I'm going to be using is is definitely more liquidy and so it it's very very transparent on the metal so it's not going to show up that great so in order for me to make that show up well I'm going to do a nice coat of this heavy bodied white paint and this is just an acrylic paint that I got probably like Michaels or something like that um, anyway you're a little bit heavier bodied paints if something is turning out to be a little too 
transparent's not showing up. Get a heavy bodied white paint to be your background color. Let it dry and and then you can put your other paint color over the top of that. It's kind of roundish, but it has irregular edges. And that's just to indicate flower um, petals. So I'm gonna do this in several different areas. And try not to always, you know, you don't wanna try and duplicate. You want it to be different. Every flower is different. So. So I'm gonna do these uh, particular shapes all over the whole bottle and I'll do that and come back. I also wanted to show you, you know, you're not always seeing a flower straight on. You might be seeing it from an angle. So let's do our reg your regular shape kind of off to the side and then give it more of a flat shape on the other side. So the roundness is more this way and then that will indicate that we're seeing the flower from the side. And I'll show you that once we do the detail work on the flower a little bit later. It's also good <clears throat> the flower continues in another area that you don't have any painting. And obviously in the masking area. So it's good to make it look though we're seeing partial, a partial flower down there. It gives the illusion of the flowers continuing um, off our canvas. And it's okay to make some of these flowers close together and leaving spaces. So I think um, what I'll do is actually right in here, make one close to this one. And this will kind of indicate that it goes behind that flower. I think that looks pretty good. We want to leave space, obviously, for other flowers. I'm going to go ahead and wash my paintbrush off, and we'll do the next shape. I'm going to go ahead and use my aqua color as my leaf color. It's not super thick-bodied paint either, and I will probably end up having to do two coats of it, and I'm fine with that. Um, but you want your flowers, you know, to be kind of wide and coming out from behind. Excuse me, your leaf. You want to come out from behind your flowers in a broad shape and then just kind of draw it into a point. And obviously I'm going to make that come out from behind that flower. And then actually you can just use the point of your brush if you're using one that's like mine. There's a round brush with a pointed tip. You can use that tip to make your tip of the leaf. And again, you can kind of you can see through this. It's not really heavy bodied. So I'm going to come back actually and do a second coat over the top of this once it has dried. Leaves are not you're not seeing them always from the same angle. So you know you can make your leaves. <clears throat> here, let's just do another one next to it. And it's okay if your leaves are close to one another. Make this one appear as though it's. We're seeing it from the side a little bit more. So I got my leaves painted on there. And I'm not necessarily done painting on those leaves, but for right now, I'm happy with that. And a lot of the white is getting pretty dry, and I'll probably come back and actually do a second coat of that once it's dried a little bit more. I'm actually going to use the white again. The ivory is still going to is going to be a little bit on the watery side too, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the white before I use the ivory. Um, just to get my next flower shape. And there will be a lot of overlapping on this one, which will be just fine. My white flowers are going to be like daisy type flowers. Sometimes it's just easiest 
to mark where your center of your flower is going to be. That way you know where you're painting to. But I'm going to use um, some long petal shapes and just basically let your paintbrush, especially if you're using a rounded point like I have, let your paintbrush be, make your shape. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to overlap the rows and just kind of push down and then draw it up so it narrows. It's probably hard to see with the white on white, but here I'll try here. So you're using the point to give that more of a point shape to your daisy flower. And as you're pulling away, press or down a little bit more. And then as you're getting close to the center, then lift up. And that will create more of a daisy type petal. Again, these don't have to be perfect. These are impressions of flowers. And actually, you can do it from the center, too. Um, you know, start from the center and then pull away, lightening the pressure as you pull away towards the tip. And obviously, this daisy is overlapping our first flower that we made there. It's coming over the top of it. And that's what we want. We want every. We want this to be filled. This is a garden of flowers. If you don't like your tip, turn it and use the tip of your brush just to change the, the tip of your flower. There, you can kind of see that uh, daisy type flower there. And I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fill in that daisy center with a white. There we go. Actually help the drying process a little bit by using the blow dryer. So I got everything dry and I'm gonna go ahead and do the rose gold now over the first flower shape that we did. And you can see it's not in very opaque and I'm okay with that. This looks actually very pretty. It's metallic. And that's one of the reasons why it is not very opaque. They tend to be a little more translucent. So I'll go ahead and go over all my first shapes with the, um, the rose gold paint. And we'll come back for the next step. I ended up doing a couple coats of the rose gold. Um, and you can still see through it in areas. And actually, I'm okay with that. Sometimes seeing through kind of gives a painterly effect. Um, creating some shadows and variation in color. You don't want everything just to be flat. So I'm going to do one more color. We have the um, I have the steel gray that I was going to be using in here, which kind of seems maybe a little redundant because we have the steel gray of the canister. But um, it's going to be a different kind of a leaf, and I'm going to go ahead and use um, again. I'm going to use the white as the background just so that it shows up better. And I'm going to be doing lines with um, very small leaf shapes. And you can see there, just like the leaf shapes we did before, making them pointy on one end, broad, and then narrowing down at the base. And I kind of want this to be more background, not so much right there on top of things. So I'll go ahead and add these in in different places on the bottle. Once that dries, we will add uh, 
degree. brown that I'm going to use for my centers of the daisies and it, it's kind of watery so I'm not real concerned if it doesn't come across as being real dark um, just want something just to kind of define or shadow the center of my daisies a little bit And again, you can come in with a second coat anytime you want to get a little more color to something. But I kind of like the fact that it's a um, little transparent. Um, it just shows, kind of gives the illusion of shadow and depth. But you can bring in some shadowy detail even to the center. Just do some really light strokes. It's looking pretty good. The only thing I really have left to do now is um, just to come back and do, do the gray over the white um, little leaves that we did just right before I did the brown centers here. So I'll come back with this gray. So there are a couple of different ways that we can do the line work. And I'm going to show you first. I have this, um, it's called Painter's Marker. Uh, this one is an opaque black. And, you know, you do want to shake them, mix up the paint. Um, shake it really well because you don't want the paint separating if it's, you know, kind of thinned out. So give it a good shake. And then it has the kind of tip where you press on it until the paint comes down and you, you load the brush that way and so basically you draw I just put my finger in some paint here you draw lines around your um, your flowers so here's our daisy so we'll just come down here and and decide where the petals are overlapping and just draw your lines. And that's just going to give definition to the flowers. So you're gonna keep doing that all the way around and you can be very sketchily about it, if that's not even a word, but I want to just <laughs> um, make the point that you know, your, your lines don't have to be so perfect because I don't know, somehow in the imperfections, that's when it just kind of has a really cool look to it. So it's okay if it's not perfect. And then if you want to, let's see, let's put the daisy. I'm gonna kind of give it a squiggly line going around the center and then actually give some dots in the center two and then I think I'll even just do a couple of you know lines coming radiating out on the petals now if you don't have a paint marker you can actually do this with black paint and a fine line brush um, I'll show you that you know if you used a very fine brush like this one you can you can do the same thing with some black paint and I would use a thicker bodied black paint because um, I am finding if you can see right here I am finding that with this paint marker I mean I'm getting a little bit of a separation in my paint kind of pulling away from itself on some of these colors but anyway that's how we want to finish this out so here's a leaf Outline the leaf 
and then do some veining on the leaf. So I'm going to be kind of making just kind of an irregular shape like this. And then just doing some squiggles. And then just to indicate maybe some petals that are, are folding over on themselves, you know, doing a line on the outside like that. Um, just basically making lines that overlap. And then also in the center to indicate maybe it's open, it's got some stamens, you know, you could do some dots in there. Um, and then out here, following the outside lines, you can overlap. And that's the thing, is you do want your lines to overlap. You don't want this... Um, I don't know how to describe it. Anyway, just make them so they overlap and then you can kind of see how I did the flower there. Now for the one that's um, off to the side where we weren't seeing it full face, we were just facing away from us more. Um, on that one, kind of making the petal This is the front petal that's kind of overlapping the center. And then we can make the other petals like we did the rest on the other one. And then we can indicate the center here by doing some dots. And one of the things we can do to indicate um, some shadow or the underside of the flowers, we can kind of bring some lines coming up and kind of following the way that the flower petal is growing. So if it's curling out and going over, then you want your lines to kind of curl out from the center and radiating out and kind of curving along with the petal. So when it comes to those little gray flowers, there's, they're, they're, excuse me, the little gray leaves, obviously you gotta be really careful because they're kind of small. But um, Um, all the line work around the flowers and leaves and I'm gonna go ahead and let this dry all the way I am going to go ahead and use this um, this varnish I'll probably do about three coats obviously letting it dry between each coat because I want this to be protected really well just to protect it from the finish I, I really don't want it up there around where I drink and messing up my seal that rubber seal or anything like that so and try to get that on there as evenly as possible and that'll just protect the top of my bottle from getting any of that finish on there 
I really only need to do it where I painted. So um, we'll come back and I'll show it to you once I have all the, um, the spray paint on. The spray finish, I should say. And obviously I want to spray this outside, not inside. Um, good ventilated area is important. Well, I did about four coats um, of the finish on the bottle. You certainly can do a shiny finish if you prefer. I like a finer line. So you do have the option of doing finer lines um, around your flowers and everything. The paint marker that I used had a medium point. The finer the point, the less forgiving it is of your painted edges or where the colors meet up. Um, there's a lot of paint markers out there. You could do this whole thing in just paint markers. You don't have to use paint brushes and paint. You can use paint markers. Um, so play with it, have some fun. Use glitter if you like glitter. Um, there's just so many options, but this is just one way I showed you. If you don't think you can paint, you don't think you're an artist, you can use some really basic shapes and make flowers um, to make your own personalized water bottle or any other thing that you have that you want to personalize. This is just an example. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, until next week, have a great one and stay healthy, stay happy. Bye everybody.